It was really valuable to the community members as well as the customers to have that regular touch point because it, it was uh, it was such a recurring feedback loop. We'd take what uh, what the customers had, had told us, we'd improve things, we'd share that back with the customers and then share that with the community and then we'd learn, learn the next thing and hopefully things got easier in the first place. So you want to make sure that that is all set up and ready to go. And then you want to make, you know, open up some time in your calendar and get talking to people one on one and uh, making sure that you can build a, a decent rapport and build some trust with them so that they can share their, their challenges and their successes with you. And um, yeah, to, to go and achieve the business outcomes that they want. So yeah, making sure uh, that you have the correct data set up, I think is absolutely vital to having a good customer success department um, for sure. Welcome to the API The Docs podcast. My guest today is Charlie Edwards and warmest welcome to Charlie. Hi. Hi, Laura. Uh, yeah, great to be here. Really excited. Why is Charlie here? I know Charlie since 2019. I think the first time ever we met was in Tokyo, of all places. Although I live in Belgium and Charlie, you were from the UK, so that was not so straightforward. And we met there because you were um, representing Hopi as a client relations executive there at DevRelCon. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Worked for um, for Hoopy for uh, almost two years. And uh, yeah, doing the conference uh, tours was was a big part of the role. Uh, we hosted the, the DevRelCon series and yeah, we were over in uh, over in Japan for our Tokyo edition. And uh, yeah, it was uh, it was lovely to meet you and all the other conference goers uh, there to learn more about the, the DevRel field. And uh, certainly with uh, with the Asian spin on it, it was uh, was really fun. And then the most recently we have met in London at API days. And uh, you were telling me that uh, you are uh, changing uh, some things in your career, but that you are staying in a very customer close, customer relationship, customer representation inwards towards the company role. And I said, well, then let's talk about this. What does customer success, customer interests, where does it play together with API documentation? And and um, you also talked about how you have set up, but this we're going to come back to later in de uh, detail, how you have set up a full customer uh, success coordination program in a startup company, if I'm if I remember correctly. And that was a very interesting thing. The, the process of this of, oh, you come to a company, you're employee number 12, and you have to set up this entire process yourself. That's fascinating, especially if we add that you know how this plays with the documentation, Fox, product, marketing, how, how do people dance this dance together when it's new? So... This is why I invited you. We might start talking about other things because you have seen so many, uh, so many portals, so many projects. But uh, yeah, let's start here. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was. Um, it was a very daunting task. Yeah. My first foray into customer success was um, was at Garden.io. Um, they're a uh, automation platform that. Uh, streamlines the, the build, test, and deploy processes um, in containerized environments. So it was a, a pretty technical product. Um, and uh, yeah, as you said, uh, then I was employee number 12. Um, and uh, yeah, the only customer success uh, hire for, for uh, quite a bit quite a bit of time in, uh, uh, in Garden. And uh, yeah, so I, I guess my most important um, or the most important part of what I did um, there was sort of forge the links between the different departments um, within there that were also in their own sort of fledgling stages um, with product, with sales, with uh, with marketing um, and with support as well. And um, to try and give the customer a, a, a valuable experience from, from their purchase in the tool because they had an open source uh, tier as well. And then the purchase tier would add on more features um, along with that. So we wanted to make sure the customers were getting the most out of uh, uh, out of what they were buying. And so, um, yeah, I, I started the initial process of um, gathering customer feedback was was the main uh, priority and um, building out the, the integration of the tool into their stack and um, figuring out how, how best to use that and then feeding that information back into the other departments. So I would feed it back to sales um, so that they could reach out to, to other potential customers more effectively, other community members and uh, yeah, to marketing for sort of distributing case studies, um, which would also then get fed back into the documentation um, so that uh, other community members 
could see themselves in uh, uh, in a variety of different use cases that they may not have thought that garden would have applied to without that uh, that step in the journey and um, and yeah back to product ultimately to to feed in and, and improve the tool um, highlight anything in the documentation that that was um, uh, contradictory or or anything like that and um, or, or misleading or confusing so uh, yeah we um, a, a big part of what I did was was have that regular touch point with um, with our customers and uh, uh, gather as much information as I could and, and feed that back out to to the other teams and uh, yeah while also trying to sort of progress them along the integration of the tool at the same time and as a context all of this happened during I guess the harshest lockdowns and this job is in Berlin I guess you stayed in the UK so your relationship building superpowers probably came in handy at this point yeah it was an interesting um, start of the job I'd, I'd probably say it was towards the tail end of of the lockdown so it was still pretty difficult um, in in terms of that but I, I was able to to get out and meet the team a, a little bit more often once things started to open up after about a few months in the role so uh, it, it certainly wasn't uh, wasn't the depths of it but yeah it was uh, it was difficult and relationship building there was was really important not only with my colleagues in uh, uh, in the team but also with my customers as well and uh, yeah they, they were quite internationally diverse let's say we had some over in the states we had a few in Europe as well and they were all quite distant um, from each other it was quite a challenge to collaborate with them and uh, uh, and and it probably it, it missed out on a lot of the elements of uh, uh, you know, in-person workshops and, and the get to know you off, in office visits and all that sort of thing. Um, that was probably what was missing there. But uh, yeah, the, the building the relationships is was is the core of customer success, I believe. And because, uh, you know, internally, it, that brings a lot of value that you can lean on other departments for what you need. It, in customer success, we're not really a technical team. So I it was really important for me to forge relationships with the product and support teams um, so that I could have the technical resources to guide customers through difficult um, onboarding segments or um, to to integrate the tool in in slightly unusual ways and with a lot of legacy tech that kind of that kind of thing so yeah not not only was it uh, internally important but externally as well to to make sure that uh, the customers felt like they could trust us and trust me with with the challenges that they were facing and be open and transparent about what was going on with them and where they wanted to be ultimately because uh, yeah uh, as I say we're not a technical team so we focus on the business outcomes as well and, and we have to recognize that the technology that we implement has ha, implement has a sort of transformative um, or has the potential to be a transformative process for, for an entire business so um, yeah that was that was predominantly our focus there. Backpedaling a little bit, how would you say, apart from the obvious where are your fingers on the technical parts or not, what would you say is the, I don't know, mindset, identity difference between a developer relations professional and someone who says, I represent customer success? What's the I elemental difference in the mindset? I mean, we do perform a lot of similar functions. You're quite right to sort of call out uh, what the differences might be. In my opinion, I would say that a developer relations professional is more community leaning and I guess has a lot more no strings obligations to a community and uh, offers that service to make it uh, a, a, an easy transition to, to using the product in the end. And it, it's very similar to what customer success does because we try and Assure that our customers get the most value out of uh, out of their purchases as well. Yeah, I, I suppose we would. Um, I mean, during certainly during my my days at Garden, I would work very closely with community and um, figuring out the learnings from from our uh, conversations with more customers. I mean, uh, in in customer success. It's in the title. We wouldn't normally interact directly with uh, with community members and certainly those on on our uh, unpaid tiers. But uh, there was certainly a lot that we could pick up from our interactions with customers that would be valuable to a wider community and, and help bring more business on board as well. Yeah, it, it, it's a very similar kind of relationship um, with our various uh, audiences, I guess. You would almost need the same skills, but applied differently. Yes. Yeah, I would agree. Um, yeah, there's certainly very similar disciplines. I bet you like, you know, the relationship building that we discussed, hugely important, sort of being able to translate different requirements from different teams, very important to both roles. Yeah, there's a lot of overlap with um, between the two disciplines. And um, yeah, uh, both of our learnings that we figure out from talking to our customers and talking to our community members will all get fed back into product at the end of the day. So yeah, very, very similar um, stories there. If I have, for one reason or another, naively pointed out this similarity, 
Have you been in a situation where in the company there was both a somebody wearing the DevRel hat or more, let's say, developer evangelist hat and somebody separate wearing customer success hat and both of them having a touch point with community? How do people in a company know whom do I contact for what and like who's who? Yeah, sure. That's um, I, I guess it's a, it was a difficult blend for me at first because I, I did wear both hats um, in the early days there. So as well as having those regular touch points with customers, I would also organize um, weekly webinars or uh, community office hours um, in, in this particular instance where we would get some of our team in to talk around a, a particular topics and particular ways of using the, the tool that would uh, yeah, we'd, we'd aim to sort of get that community outreach and we'd invite our customers as long, uh, along as well. And um, our customers were often, you know, some of the, the more it, it was a it was a, a, a bi-directional um, webinar. So we, we would have our community and our customer members talking on, on the call as well. And uh, yeah, our customers would often be some of the most vocal um, about it. Understandably, they've the ones made <laughs> they're the ones who have made the financial commitment, I suppose. But it uh, it allowed a community member to be able to see what sort of challenges, what sort of benefits are, are being brought up by, by using the tool. And um, yeah, having that relationship uh, with, with both sides of, um, of the coin there really, I think, added something quite different to our particular outreach as well. And we would use those for, for, for marketing um, as well. We'd, we'd upload those to YouTube and um, they get fed back into um, you know our use cases, our success stories and our documentation as well. So yeah, uh, we- whoa, whoa, whoa. now we're on topic. Okay, <laughs> you said it. <laughs> so yeah. let's, uh, let's zoom in on that, on, on the documentation and, and maybe marketing part. So all that customer success does how does it catalyze the creation of and what artifacts that will then get published or how the artif- how do the artifacts or outcomes and feedback that a customer success interaction produces how does that find it back its way into how written or recorded representation of the product or of services happen so how do you see this ping pong and 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 mutual in, uh, influencing of each other especially cool. about docs yeah, it was an interesting relationship. I mean, uh, early days um, when I was sort of the only, and I discussed with customers how they were getting on with their onboarding, how they were getting to find the tool, how are they interacting with the resources that they're finding online, which is mainly the documentation, and uh, you know whether that goes positively or negatively. I, I take those uh, those learnings from that uh, that touch point, feed that back into wherever it needs to go, I suppose. So if it's a success story, I'd feed that back out to marketing. And they, they, they transform that into uh, a video or, or a, a link in the documentation uh, to a case study or, or uh, just straight onto the website for some uh, for some marketing collateral. And if it was uh, negative th- as well, that can go to that can go to products so that we can fix bugs. We can fix, you know, conflicting documentation or, or, or confusing documentation, I should say, so that um the journey for for the customer is much smoother in uh, in in the future, and same for the community members as well. If if it was a more uh, generalized feature of, of the tool, uh, that that could also be applied to the free tier of the tool, which uh, which the community would have more of a uh, an interest in. And uh, yeah, we we post out these these case studies in our Slack channels, on our Discords, on our um, uh, community forums, those sort of things, um, where we can um, interact more more closely with our community. So yeah, all all of those. Um, regular meetings with customers um, were, were really vital to fully bolstering the documentation that we were using. And um, it, it gave us such a rich access point into the minds of uh, into the minds of our users. It was really valuable to the community members as well as the customers to have that regular touch point because it, it was uh, it was such a recurring feedback loop. We'd take what uh, what the customers had, had told us, we'd improve things, we'd share that back with the customers and then share that with the community and then we'd learn learn the next thing and hopefully things got easier. And overall they did. Um, during during my time there we reduced the um, the time of onboarding down from uh, it was something ludicrous, like five or six months um, previously, down to five or six weeks, um, which is still very long. But um, yeah, huge improvement um, just from you know improving our documentation and our product to a point uh, where we could make a set template of, of how customers were, were going to onboard using documentation links um, throughout that that journey, and. Um, yeah, uh, make sure that they had all the resources that they need, as well as our re- regular touch points to to work through those um, in as efficient a manner as possible. So yeah, big improvements were made um, from that feedback loop over time. Um, 
yeah, I, f I feel that it grew exp exponentially as we were building that up. So, yeah. And if I was a technical writer who is responsible for the coherent, cohesive and overarching documentation of the API or the APIs of company. And I would feel that's all great, but I think we would need somebody who is playing this role of talking with customers to help them to achieve the business outcomes that they mm -hmm. want. How would you recommend to go about it? So this, this balancing act of learning to dance on the fly, mm -hmm. and how would you set this up if it was a already running ship on the waters, they already have a service or a product, and then they decide this is the role that we need. And Charlie, would you set up this process? We have all the usual teams. How would you go about this? And how, yeah. where would you involve the docs, if at all? Well, I think data is the, is the key driver in building the process there. So much of customer success can be improved and yeah, re, it, it, is, it is revitalized or, or vitalized in the first place, I should say, with rich utilization data from, from customers. So having access to those various insights um, and usage tools is, is really important there. And so once you have the data, then you'd go about setting up a, a database, which can then give you a, a bit of an at-a-glance view of how a customer is doing based on those utilization statistics. And you're eventually trying to, to build up a bit of a health score there so that you can see whether a customer is in the green, in the orange, or in the red. And yeah, the ones in the green, those are the ones you want to learn from, sort of how they are using the tool, how they are interacting with the documentation, and how that feeds back into, into the product. Um, and uh, yeah, the orange and the red ones are the ones that really need your, your attention, your guidance to help increase adoption. And you know, it might point to some some issues with things like documentation or misunderstandings about um, various features, things like that that could be made much more clear in the documentation and, and on the website in the first place. So yeah, you want to you want to make sure that that is all is all set up and ready to go, and then you want to make you know open up some time in your calendar and get talking to people one on one and uh, making sure that you can build a, a decent rapport and build some trust with them so that they can share their their challenges and their successes with you and um, yeah to to go and achieve the business outcomes that they want. So yeah, making sure uh, that you have the correct data set up, I think, is absolutely vital to having a good customer success department um, for sure. And if you would do this in a way that you described. So everything works fine. What would your promise be? What do you think? Which metrics of the documentation maintenance or writing team? Which of their metrics would customer success help with? Where would they see that the changes that they make or the additions that they make based on your advice, that it's uh, indeed helping? Yeah, I mean, um, support would immediately see that, but would the docs team see it? I would say that a really good shared metric for a docs team and a customer success team would be customer onboarding time. If a customer can get onboarded within an acceptable margin of time, in our case, it was five or six weeks down from five, five to six months, obviously tool dependent. If you can work within that shared metric, I think that really does point to a really solid documentation journey that the customer is going through. All, all of our onboarding, uh, we, we would share an onboarding project with a lot of customers that would have links to the documentation as they were going through their journey. And so the faster that we made that, that shows that the documentation is easy to navigate. It's easy to easy to understand. The examples are there that they need to. There's, there's templates there that customers can use to get from zero to hello world within five minutes, for example. That is a, that's that was one of our key goals was um, that initial setup it would take five minutes. Obviously, it would take much longer to work with the rest of the stack. But yeah, they could get something going and, and producing some output within five minutes. So yeah, I, I would say that the onboarding journey is a really good metric to, to share between the two teams. Mm -hmm. And if I ask the same question about sales, veering off a little bit from API docs topics, but I'm interested. Yeah, the renewals, um, the renewals metrics there are going to be the the key shared metric. I I would say um, how many customers go from uh, or or just run down their contract versus how many renew for another year or another two years or something like that. It's quite an extraordinary cost actually that acquiring a new customer costs five times more than the cost of keeping a current customer. And so I would say that 
if sales have identified from from some of the feedback that customer success has given them, if they've identified what the ideal customer profile looks like, because I'm quite often working with a, a variety of different teams, I would have um, some intuition on what sort of team structure works with onboarding tools more effectively or, or faster, um, and what um, yeah what size of, of company this works best for, what industries they might be in. If I can feed that information back to sales and they can make more sales off the back of that, and then conversely, I get to keep those sales on board for another year, um, I think those, those sort of different uh that that recurring uh loop there uh makes for a really great synergy personally and if i connect these three dots if i if i may ask i'm, I'm really taking sure. you to the weeds now so for sales it's re- really great to see um that renewals are happening now mm-hmm. the docs team would say time to from a to b is shorter or mm-hmm. less staccato because of the feedback that you brought us from customers now how can I connect this? So if I'm a documentarian and I know that renewal is a goal, what mm-hmm. can I ask from customer success to help me with the docs, not just to shorten onboarding, but to help renewals? Can customer success fish this information out for me? What is needed? What information can I serve in what way and when to help with this renewal? It's not necessarily technical writing anymore, or definitely yeah. not. Say more like marketing copy, but in small companies, things flow a bit into each other. A lot of our renewals in my previous company were were very much based on how quickly they got going with the tool. If they got going really quickly um, and uh, and were seeing value at an earlier point in their um, their first year, for example, um, then they would more likely renew than not if we had customers that were you know taking that that five to six months then it became a lot more difficult so with the importance of the 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 sort of first few weeks with the tool i would say that uh documentation writers if you know if they have a variety of different case studies they're they're written in a variety of different languages um and you know ready to slot into a variety of different tech stacks that makes a huge difference to my job because it makes um, makes the customer on board quicker, and I'm not just sort of fighting with different stages of onboarding, but I'm actually getting to to get down into the the nitty gritties of using the tool and to make sure that they are seeing value. It's not just that they can use the tool; they are actually getting value out of their purchase as well and seeing a return on their initial investment. That's the really important thing for for my teams there. Yeah, so anything that documentation writers can do to improve that initial journey makes a huge difference further down the line because then we get into the really fun stuff where uh, the customer is using the tool to its fullest potential they're seeing scenarios where they didn't originally think that the tool would apply to but now that they're set up and comfortable with it they can apply it to that they can scale out to different teams and different departments there's a lot of different benefits that come with that initial speed um, because if they're not seeing that's five or six months in, they're starting to question it. If they're not seeing it eight or nine months in, then they're really thinking, oh, this has been a, a waste of time and money. Um, so the sooner that we can get them seeing the, the initial value, the, the sooner that we can get them seeing the unexpected value as well. I don't know if you're willing to answer the following question, but have you seen more like dead ends activities in customer success? And if you can link that to docs a little bit, that is just... You're doing a lot, but it's simply not worth the effort. There was numerous examples where I think the the difficulties of having a small team kind of our ambitions were were wide, but our capabilities at the time were were probably not up to that level. And um, yeah, a, a lot of that sort of I, I keep coming back to onboarding um, because that was where we found most of our difficulties in was um, with this initial stage. And so, for example, we would have a customer that would like an example um, for GitLab rather than GitHub. Um, they would, they'd would like to see a, a setup example for that. Uh, and uh, we would try and go away and write an example for that, but the team was too stretched as it was. And that example kept sitting there for, for quite some time. Um, and like I said, that delayed the initial value proposition and uh, yeah, it, it, it made uh, working with that customer so much difficult because they just they couldn't get past that point of um, not having the example that they needed to apply to, to, to that particular moment in time. And um, yeah, uh, eventually we 
only managed to get that customer onboarded with a couple of months of their contract left. And um, by that stage, it was it was too late. They hadn't rolled it out to the amount of teams that they wanted to. Um, they hadn't they hadn't uh, brought it to scale the way that they imagined they would in the first uh, in, in in their initial discussions with our team. Um, and yeah, we 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 lost a customer that way, which I was um, yeah very saddened to to hear. But it was uh, a very valuable learning experience. It's sort of fed back into the the ideal customer profile that we were looking to build there uh, with that particular customer we were working with uh, with only one person in devops uh, who was in charge of the entire setup operation they were a small team as well they were trying to uh, fix their own problems and build their own products and um, yeah um, it, it was a difficult time for both teams i suppose and uh, yeah it, we 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 took a lot of learning from that and so you know we we made sure that it's not just a case of can the customer afford the product, it's do you actually have the resources? And I mean that more than financial, do you have the headcount? Do you have um, the the capabilities and the time within the team to get the setup, uh, to get the tool set up in the appropriate way? What could you do differently? So if you got backed in time, same situation, same customer request, same setup, same resources, what do you think you could do differently to not to delay something? Yeah, um, I I think that would be fighting for the customer priorities. I guess making the case of that that time to value um, more strongly and getting the resources that I needed to accomplish that for the customer um, sooner on in their life cycle than um, than we could focus on or that we did focus on um, at the time. If I'm completely honest, I would have recommended that sales actually don't talk to these guys until about two or three years time as well, because they also did not have the resources to, despite that one example um, that I've mentioned there, they also didn't have the resources to be able to um, put the time in. I think even if we did provide that example for them um, in that particular instance. So um, yeah, uh, having known more that a one man band can't, can't, implement this tool effectively i would have i would have recommended that maybe we just um we, we leave the discussions with that customer until they are in a better place to to take on quite the the task that implementing this tool proved to be for them um so yeah i i think that's what i would do i do see some some gotchas also that you talk with the individual customer mm-hmm. and have to understand their their use case well but then what the customer says they want at that point in time, that might be very unique to them. And even though the, the job is to bring these needs back into to product development, uh, if it that goes that far, or maybe just some adjustments or, or narrative or pointers. But then I guess that there is such an intermediate size where you do see some patterns, but they are not so statistically significant because two customers said that, but not four. Do we need this? Do we not need this? Do we segue into the building this? Do we not? Do we follow what the customer needs, therefore not delaying their renewal? Or do we build what we think? It's, yeah, it's a hard, hard decisions overall. Yes, I agree. And um, I, I actually believe in a startup environment that some level of churn, probably more than usual um, is good for a business because the learnings that it offers you um, in terms of how you build the product and you build your document documentation you build your various processes within all the departments I think it really adds a lot of value um, because it stings at the time and and ultimately you you don't forget what stings you like that and uh, yeah the I, I think most businesses if you if you were to offer them you know you lose one customer but you gain five more from the experience and from the improvements that you make for it every business would take that um would take that deal i i believe um so yeah I, it's not that you should protect every customer at any cost uh, that, that you have to pay for that I, I think some level of churn is is acceptable in in those environments and um because of the increased cost of um, of attracting new customers rather, rather than keeping them that you know you have to keep the majority of them that that's certainly um, um, an important part of the the process there but I think that um, the learnings that you can get from from those difficult customers and from those ones that don't work out in the end I do think will benefit the business as a whole provided you can keep enough customers around to keep it a you know a viable business situation at the very least 
And what kind of situation are you uh, going into now? You recently started yeah, customer um, success manager. Yeah, customer success manager at um, at, at CAE Technology. Um, we are a, um, a Cisco uh, reseller ultimately, um, but we also work with um, with some other partners, um, or we are a partner of some other um, big firms as well. But we do IT infrastructure, um, and uh, yeah, that that mainly revolves around networking and security, a uh, bit of data center work as well, and a bit of um, bit of collaboration tools as well. Um, so uh, yeah, it's a uh, it, it's a really interesting company. I'm I'm, I'm only a couple of months in um, at this stage and it's been very training heavy so far I've uh, I've done a lot of courses and a lot of certifications in in my first uh, first little months but um yeah I'm learning who my first uh, customers are um, uh, already and uh, yeah I'll be I'll be meeting them for the first time as soon as I've uh, finished my final big qualification um, which I'm hoping to do very soon um, but yeah uh, we, we work with some of the biggest um, biggest public and private names in in the in the uk um and uh yeah really happy to be uh to be working for them i'm yeah, very definitely. happy that you're it's, very excited uh, about this yeah i really am it's um yeah my I, I i still maintain a very good relationship with a lot of the people at my previous company and um a, a lot of them said you know look for a bigger company when you go for your next thing because that you go for your next job because that'll really benefit learning the practice of customer success and and working with us you know more established um uh customers and and working within a, an environment which has far you know far more data to play with than than at my previous one where things were just sort of getting set up and yeah things were kind of a bit all over the place and it was all, it was all two very different uh, games yeah very yeah it precisely it's um yeah i can i take much more of a, an opportunity to soak in um, and learn and from from a lot of different colleagues in a lot of different departments and uh, yeah forge those relationships again uh, it, we're um, despite the increase in size of my company I work in the CX department customer experience department and uh, that's a very new organization within the business so I'm finding myself actually applying a lot of the skills that I used in my previous role to this one as well just at a much bigger scale again creating various process documents and uh, um, setting up different relationships with with various teams so that we can provide them with what they need and they can provide us with what we need to um, help get the customer the most value out of out of what they're buying and uh, yeah it's a it's a really exciting time I'm, I'm glad for the new challenge but I'm also glad that there's a, a bit of familiar ground uh, in in terms of the building work that that needs doing to get going with as well so yeah it's very exciting Rearing back to my original question, as a as a last question, if I am a documentarian in a company and the customer success department is shaping up now, it's a new thing. I'm already busy as usual doing my own things and trying to make the user experience of the documentation better every day. What can I reach out to customer success with? What can they help me with? What can I ask directly that isn't a bother for them because, you know, solve your own problems? What can they tell me? The most valuable bit I, I think that we can do is provide that real experience of what the customer is going through and how they navigate through the documentation to get set up. You know, are there, um, is the customer getting stuck at a certain point in, in their life cycle or their onboarding or, or their wider adoption? Is uh, our team members understanding how to use the tool and not just the, the practical usage of it, but uh, is it giving them the value that they need to see out of uh, using tools? And um, yeah, I, I think that deeper insight into the user journey through um, through documentation and through um, through adoption of a technology is is really important for it's important for both sides to to know how that journey goes and to know that journey in detail so that they can make the path as smooth as possible. Um, if, uh, yeah, you can't build a road without knowing where it's going to go. Um, so I, I think that uh, knowing a customer is at a certain point and they're wanting to get from that point to, you know, the promised land, we want to make sure that that roadway is, is all paved and nice and smooth for them. Um, so finding out what they're going to have to do to take that journey is... Uh, it should be really valuable to both sides and um, yeah having that customer success having that sort of regular touch point if it's on a weekly or a monthly basis with customers is so valuable um, then I, I would say potentially gets more into the detail than maybe an evangelist might where they um, they put something out there and it, it goes to the masses and there's this 
overwhelming wave of feedback uh, to to deal with as a result. And um, whereas I, I believe the the more concentrated touch points and picking up patterns from those those really detailed stories that the customer is going through would really provide value to a documentarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Because then you can't say, oh, yes, just just statistics, but that's not the opinion I care about. No, no, no. you care about your <laughs> customer's opinion. Sure. And um, yeah, it, it, it creates a, a story between those that have actually made the commitment to purchase it as well versus those who are maybe just observing and having a look because you know what the person is going through who has made that commitment and ultimately that's where you want as many people to get to as possible so having that regular touch point is 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 super valuable to ensure that more people can do that i think very enlightening thank you charlie for willing to go into it and spell it out if someone doesn't know yet how to play with their customer success colleague i hope that this was very helpful and i wish you a lot of lot of joy and curiosity in uh, this role that you're now taking on yeah thank you laura that's um yeah very very much appreciated and uh yeah really enjoyed this and uh hope it was useful for um for those listening as well and see you soon at some of the conferences i hope so yeah see you soon bye charlie thank you bye laura thank you for listening to the api the docs podcast we thank our colleagues at Pronovix Developer Portals for letting us work on this, and the entire API community for all of the mutual support and sharing of experiences that you give each other. Do you have a topic or guest that you would like us to spotlight? Drop a note at podcast at pronovix.com. If you go to the website, api.docs.org, you can find the recaps and recordings of past API.docs conferences, as well as the upcoming program. Until next time, be well.